All right, Coach, you're about to begin your 13th season at the helm of Rowan football. You're coming off the team's 18th NJAC crown and are the preseason, preseason favorites coming into this year. How do you keep your team focused and not get too cocky? Well, I think, you know, the way we finished the season last year losing, uh, Mary Harden Baylor certainly will not ha have us feeling too, too good about ourselves because the season ended not how we wanted it. Um, and I think our players understand preseason rankings are just that. It's what people think. Uh, you still need to prove uh, your worth out on the field. This team's returning 16 starters from last year's squad. Talk a little bit about the leadership of those individuals and how they help the younger guys. Yeah, I think it's a, gr a great senior group. Uh, it started in the spring last year, you know, when you finish the season and you start your, you know, your weight training and winter conditioning and then your practices in the spring and your non-traditional segment. Really all that stuff starts at that point. So that's not something that started right now. It started, you know, last spring, but it's a great senior group. Um, there are a lot of good players. There are a lot of good role players. There are a lot of good leaders. I think the, the players elected four great captains on both sides of the ball, two offensive and two defensive captains. So we, we couldn't be more happier with, with what our leaders and our captains are doing right now. So you've been in preseason camp now for a couple weeks. You went down to Ocean City for the third year in a row. Talk a little bit about how that experience uh, really helps the kids and keep them uh, from just getting out of the normal routine of being on campus. Yeah, we started it um, three years ago. Uh, our defensive coordinator, Pat Lancetta, who's a Cape Atlantic League guy and had coached you know, with his brother at, at Hamilton and in Absagami and down that area. Just thought it might be good to get out and go down around that area. We've gotten a lot of great players from there. So we thought, why not go somewhere down that area? He, he came up with the idea of possibly going to Ocean City. He had some connections, so we followed up. And for the third year in a row, it's worked out really great. So that way, you know, after a week of being with everybody every single day, the coaches are sick of the players, the players are sick of the coaches, the coaches are sick of the coaches, the players are sick of the players. So it's a great way to get out, you know, get some good work done, which we did in the morning. Um, let the players see some family members, you know, some of the new players that have been away for a week, away from their family for the first time ever. They get a chance to see their family members afterwards and then walk the boardwalk and relax and go on rides and do all those type of things. It is great. It was made possible by our Gridiron group. Now moving on to the players and the team, first starting with the offense and quarterback Bill McCarty. He's coming off a strong season, one that he took over halfway through. What changes have you seen from last year that have carried on into this season? I think he's in just much better shape. I think last year, you know, he was fighting for the position, but but had knew that that, that he probably you know wasn't going to win it in training camp and struggled a little bit. Um, you know, had questions. He had been out of football for a while, hadn't played since high school had some injuries and things happen at the previous school where he was at Kutztown and you know I think he was just trying to figure out you know what he wanted to do which is natural luckily for us he stuck with it um, he waited his turn he prepared and then uh, when we had the injury he stepped right in and against you know one of the top ranked teams in the nation you know had a great day very efficient not flashy hard working um, the thing I think with, with Billy that he needed to understand was he needed to come back in much better shape you know, I don't think he was prepared last year to play college football and be a starter. I think he, he got a taste of what it was like, so I think he's much more prepared this year. He's in better shape, he's physically sharp, um, he's throwing the ball much better, but he's mentally sharp as well. And, and his, it, it's his leadership ability. That, that from day one, was his strong suit, and, and that has really shown. In the backfield, Whit Marcelin outstanding season last year seven rushing records that he broke now it's safe to say that teams are going to be more focused on him this year he's going to get it like an adrian peterson effect where teams are going to stack the box how do you counter attack with them and still give him as many touches as last year yeah well one of the things we need to do is we need to be smarter with wit and not run him as much i mean he played half the season last year with essentially a, a break in his ankle which is pretty amazing for what he did um, but we need to be smarter as coaches. We, we can't afford to have him take that pounding from game one all the way till game 10. We need to be able to mix in, you know, Dante Tobler and some of the other players of that position, which we feel comfortable with. So again, it's going to be limiting what he does and, and not, you know, being enamored that he has to play every rep, every snap and carry the ball all the time. We, we just can't do that to him. We need him as fresh in game one in game 10.
Uh, the other part that's going to be nice is Warren Oliver's back to wide receiver, so he's going to be able to alleviate some of that pressure off of the run game. And again, that's where I think Billy's really made strides, um, throwing the ball and, and being fit to be able to get the ball downfield. The nice part is, too, we used a lot of young wide receivers last year that really weren't all that ready to play. Now, with a year under their belt, they should, you know, should be able to um, you know, perform at a high level. So I think being smart by, by mixing in some of the other running backs, I think by using Warren Oliver, having a big-time, big-play receiver back, and then by sprinkling out to some of the other wide receivers in the tight ends, um, I think that's going to alleviate some of the problems that teams will bring defensively to stop Witt. In order to have the good success that McCarty, Marcel, and Oliver are going to have this year, it all starts with the offensive line, and it all seems like it starts right with Joe Borden. Talk a little bit about his style of play and how he helps the other players on that line. Yeah, Joe's, you know, Joe, Joe's a, a fifth-year senior. He had an injury one year and missed the whole season. Wasn't sure if he was going to come back. Um, you know, he decided to come back. Uh, to, to further some, some degree areas that he wanted to do a academically. Um, just a blue collar, hard working, again, not flashy, doesn't really say a ton, but when he does speak and when he does act, people take notice and he's a great role model, a lot like Warren too. That's why they were both elected captains on the offensive side of the ball. There you go, Mr. Borden, there you go, Mr. Whoa, now Joe Borden, he's at the top of his class. He's at the top of his class. Moving over to the other side of the ball, the Profs had one of the best defenses in the conference last season, and a big part of that was due to the play of Chris Alvarez, uh, one of the top D linemen in the NJAC. How does he produce even better than last year? Well, I, th I think it's just Chris's work ethic. Again, you know, elected captain by his, by his teammates. Um, he just plays at such a higher level than most of the other players, and he does that in practice, and it's annoying at times. Um, it's bothersome at times, um, you know, but I think he's understood that he needs to go at that level, but be careful in, in what he does in terms of, of hitting other people. So I think he's learned to practice at a high level. If everybody practiced at the level Chris would, we would be phenomenal. Um, the hope is that all the players can try to strive to work as hard as Chris does, but, you know, he, he, he plays how he practices, full speed, all out, um, and again, you know, he, he kind of stirs the drink for us defensively. If he's on his game, which he usually is, and he's disrupting, it opens up a lot of other things for a lot of other really good players. I know special teams is very important to the time management, field management of the game of football. There's uh, three players vying for the punter and kicker position, and I've talked to Coach Cooper, and he says it's very, very close. Just talk about those three individuals. Yeah, and, and again, we're fortunate that, that Co Coach Cooper was able to join us, kind of a, a kicking guru in the area, um, you know, so he was able to join the staff. He's done a phenomenal job with the three kickers. Um, you know, we knew what Mark could do from his, his, his work last year in the punt game and some kickoff in PAT. We lost Dan Dawson, who did some of the other PAT field goal work. Um, Nick Gentile, we weren't sure if he was going to come back because he had an injury, um, was cleared and able to come back, and he's competed really hard. And then, you know, Tyler, you know, Tyler Knight, and um, a young man we initially didn't recruit, and we're, he was more recruiting us. Um, and, and again, I, I think that shows that he really wanted to be in school here. He thought he could compete. He really wanted to join the team. Um, he did, and he's been a really pleasant surprise. So all three are vying for all the positions, and. You know, when you have more than one kicker, it provides you with a lot of, a lot of opportunity. You open the season tomorrow, 7 p.m., at home against Widener. You've only faced them one other time, and that was a 41 nothing victory back in 2007. Just talk about some of the things we we're going to see from you and then some of the things that we're going to see from the Widener Pride. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a great game. Uh, you know, they, they have another new coach again, their, their third coach in, in three years. So... You know, I'm sure they're going through some transitioning and, and, and some differences. Um, but from, from what I've heard, you know, they, they, they've been rated fairly high in some of the polls. It's a good program. I mean, only two years ago, you know, they're playing Mount Union at Mount Union in the semifinals. So they have a rich tradition, rich history. They've won national championships. They've been in the national playoffs. Um, you know, they contend for the MAC championship every year. So again, you know, we. We, we, we lost Del Val, but then picked up just as strong a team in the conference. So um, I think it's going to be a great game. I think the atmosphere will be tremendous. 
Friday night, um, under the lights, our largest freshman class in school history. Um, fireworks afterwards, um, you know, so I think it should be what college football should all be about. It's about the players playing and a lot of fans cheering them on. So it should be a really exciting game and it'll be a good test for us early on to see where we are and, and what type of team and program we are for this season. All right, Coach, thank you and good luck this season. Thank you very much.